Hello, you wonderful people. Probably didn't want to see my face again, but here you are. Here we are to talk more about will AI replace developer jobs? And again, I'm making these videos because there's a lot of hype out there. And I just want to kind of try to help everybody navigate this hype. So in today's video, we're going to talk about some things that I'm doing to kind of see past the hype and maybe you will find this interesting as well. So let's take a look at jump in. Will AI replace developer jobs? So what am I doing to fight the hype? Well, I'm not just watching YouTube bros and YouTube AI gurus online that are telling us the end is near. What I'm actually trying to do is to learn more about what the AI models are actually capable of and try to listen or find interesting talks by experts in the industry and not YouTubers. So we're going to jump right in here and do it. One of the recent talks that I just uh, watched and I recommend you all watch is by Thomas Dietrich, What's Wrong with Large Language Models and What We Should Do Building Instead. It's a great talk because it talks about some of the difficulties and challenges they are faced in the current state. And obviously he talks about in this video about what we could do and what's next. But it's still a really good way for all of us to kind of take a look and see, you know, where is the reality and what are these uh, chat GPT models capable of? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this URL here because I'm not going to scroll and watch this video. I guarantee, like, I recommend you watch this whole video. It's a really good talk. It's hour and 15 minutes long. Maybe it's going to break my app because it's pretty long video, but I have this summarize app that I created for myself. And a lot of people are like, Paul, show us the GitHub where you build this app. I'm like, it's not that hard. You all could build it yourself. I'll give you a clue. I use the length chain and open AI. And this video that I'm probably trying to summarize right now is extra long. So maybe this will break my app. But the point here is that while this waits, you need to kind of Think about, oh, that was pretty quickly. And it did uh, do uh, do a thing here. Let me save this description here. And so basically what he talks about is uh, he talks about the complexity of large language model and how, what are their shortcomings and some of the things that need to be still be addressed. And so the idea before they could come for our jobs and be end of all developers, there are certain things that still need to be fixed and it all takes time. And one of the things he said while starting this talk for anybody who's in computer science, don't worry, there's still a lot of problems to be solved, but we're not going to go through this whole list, but I recommend that you watch this as well, uh, this talk. And so the the key points and things that he talked about inside of analysis of large mod models and their shortcomings, discussion of the industry's efforts on addressing the flaws in LLMs and spending a lot of money instead of trying to do a new way of doing things is so just covering the flaws. Then he introduces a bunch of solutions, but also in the video, he talks about additional things in terms of like the issue with hallucination, all this other stuff. And it is really insightful to kind of say on the surface, these language AI models work and they're kind of cool, but it's like a parlor trick because there's still so many shortcomings that still need to be addressed. And so I'm actually able to chat with this video by saying, what are some of the shortcomings in LLMs as discussed in this video? And again, I build this app, so it probably doesn't work well and it's broken, but it saves me time from watching the whole video. And hopefully it'll give us an insightful answer that I could share with you all. And again, it's thinking. And so here goes some of the shortcomings of LLM discussed in this video includes knowledge representation, LLM struggles with representing certain types of knowledge, such as reasoning about actions, ongoing process, difficulty in updates. That's like a big one. Uh, LLMs are not easily updated, which possesses a challenge when new information needs to be incorporated. It's also very, very expensive as law, also energy and environmental cost and so on, lack of trustworthy. So I highly recommend you go ahead and check out uh, this video by Thomas Dietrich. Uh, really, really good. And so what I want to say with all the things that are going on, and we'll, I'll recommend some other channels that I love just for fun. The thing is, you need to control your input. And if you spend time in certain channels, certain areas in, online, it becomes like an echo, like, 
uh, chamber. So if you want to be all doom and gloom, you could find enough people talking about doom and gloom and how the world is ending. If you want to be more realistic, you can, but sometimes it's very hard to get past the noise. So the first thing I'm going to suggest is start trying to find other opinions by professors in AI, people that work in the industry to give you the truth and not people that are trying to sell a product. So that's number one. Number two, let us let me tell you one of my favorite uh, people to follow when it comes to AI stuff. It's this guy, let me scroll down, Andrew Ng, Andrew NG. And here, um, he did like a great talk here. What I like about this talk, again, uh, you could look it up. It's effects or potential effects on labor force in regard to AI. And what he talks about in the most important way is that don't think of it as replacing jobs, but automating or making certain tasks of the jobs easier. So the again, the idea of AI and some of the tooling that is gonna be around or, is, or even is available is that it, the idea is not to replace human workers, but the idea is to automate certain things. And again, this could impact certain industries, but not in the way that these doom and gloom folks say. And again, I suggest go check out these folks that are in the industry talking about stuff. So we talked about this. Also, another amazing channel that I like to follow, and I thought this was kind of awesome because a lot of times when we're thinking about artificial intelligence, a lot for a lot of us, it's like it's a black box. We have no idea how this stuff works. So it becomes this mythical thing where we feel that it could do all these things that it can't like that, like it's like magic. And so the idea is start following channels that help you to demystify this idea of artificial intelligence. So this computer file uh, channel, I highly recommend, really interesting. And this talk on how AI understand images was really awesome. I'm not even gonna put it into my summarize app and show you the summary. Just go watch it. It was so cool and so interesting. And I got to learn the process of how computer understands images and it's not magic. There's um, a science to it. and with everything, there are certain pros and limitations. And I think the more we understand these technologies, the better it is for us. And so another channel that I want to recommend, and this is more for developers and this concept of getting better as a developer and the fact that it's not an easy field. There's a lot of learning that involves. Internet of Bugs, amazing channel, highly recommend. And one of the things that here, I, I do want to pull out a quote here, uh, what he says, and I, again, recommend that you watch this. So let me go into my super duper app that's built with Remix and Strappy, which is amazing. All this data is actually saved in my Strappy backend, so I could take it, uh, take a look at it after it generates a summary. I could either regenerate or save it. And what's cool about it, the way I created this app is that I could now ask questions about the video. So if I forgot something, like instead of having to check, so let me gen uh, save the description and let me kind of do here. What is the main take away in terms, uh, in terms, uh, I, I don't know how to spell in terms, is it two words? In terms of being, uh, being, uh, good developer. So let's see what it says. And again, I recommend you watch this video. Again, I'm just using the summarize tool to help me to kind of get to the main things. Let's see. So here's an interesting, it doesn't quite like the AI here fails miserably because it doesn't really tell us. So the idea here, the main takeaway is being a good developer is based on information, right? Is to help developers underline. So it's kind of right. It's to have deep understanding of how our line technology system works. So here's the thing that I'm going to say, and I, I'm not even going to ask anymore here, but you could, uh, definitely check out this video by Internet of Bugs, and I'll probably make a video just specific on this. But what he said in the video is, a lot of us know how to build something. Like I know how to build a React and a website or build a Next.js website. I know how to build a Next, uh, not Next, uh, let's talk about Node.js. I know how to build a Node.js backend. I know how to do it, but do I know how it works underneath? So what he recommends for all of you developers who are just starting out or been doing it in the industry is really focus not on how to do something because that's very surface level learning. Anybody could learn how to build a HTML and CSS website. Anybody could learn how to use Next.js or Remix or any one of these underlying frameworks or whatever the technology is, the main and the most important goal is to actually learn how these things work and to develop deeper understanding. So I am always 
feeling this imposter syndrome. I switched careers into a development late in my life. So I always feel like I don't know enough. And I, in the, I've been in the industry for uh, four and a half years. And what I'm trying to do now, like I'm fairly comfortable on this, you know, how to do things. Now I'm really trying to pivot my learning to take it to that deeper level to understand why and how like the things work underneath the hood. So what I want to encourage you, number one, watch his videos. Uh, the guy's amazing, Internet of Bugs. But also I want to encourage everybody to understand that getting into this industry, it's not easy. It's like jumping into a never ending rabbit hole. And your goal as you continue on your journey as a developer is to continue to learn in a way where you're not doing the same thing all over again. For instance, if when you're in grade school, you go to first grade, then you go to second grade, then you go to third grade, and the difficulty of the tr problems that you solve in each of those grades increases. And what happens, or the common mistake that a lot of people fall through is that they repeat grade one over and over and over again. They continue to do the same thing over and over again, and they're never really stepping out of that uh, shallow uh, pull into the deep end, into the deeper understanding where the knowledge lies. And this is what we all have to strive. We have to continue to deeper understand how underlying systems work. So I highly recommend you check out the video and some of the recommendation Internet of Bugs says. And when it comes to AI, and I don't want to make this video too long, is I really recommend if you're going to give opinion about AI and you're going to say how it's going to replace all the jobs, please do me a favor, do yourself a favor, do a course on how AI works. There's so many good resources available online. Deep Learning AI, I should subscribe to this channel. I'm in my trolling channel here. Uh, this is uh, my stupid brain. If you see my comments from my stupid brain, it's me. I'm just trolling my own videos. But uh, I also got premium, so I don't have to worry about ads. But check out these lessons, this course on how machine learning help yourself to demystify. And this course is really cool. I'm in the process of taking it. It's geared for people who like, you don't need to be like a genius to follow along. Like, I mean, it does get like tough, but you could all make it. But what I want to empower all of you to do is to start understanding how these underlying system works. And so you start to kind of be able to confidently talk about it not by recoding the hype that you hear, but actually understanding how the things work. So I'm going to finish this video. If you liked it, you didn't, I don't care. I'm just going to speak my mind. I'm going to try to plot more videos, blow up the internet. Uh, but I want to say is stay vigilant with trying to cut through the hype and try to use your critical thinking and practice to understand like why would somebody say certain things? Maybe it's for views. Maybe it, they're just trying to get investors excited to invest in their companies. But the last thing I want you to do is to stop pursuing something that you enjoy, like trying to become a developer or learning to code because of someone's opinion. So with that being said, I want to say I love you. Thank you so much for giving me your time because I don't know why you do it. But if you were here with me today, I thank you. And I really appreciate your time. I hope you found this video valuable. And let me know in the comments if you like these type of videos. I just want to share with you some of my thought process and how I think about stuff being a 43-year-old self-taught developer who broke into the industry, only been working in it four, four and a half years. I started like at 39, so I'm going technically my fourth and a half year. And so I just want to share with you my experience, things that I've done. Am I the smartest developer? No, I'm not. And this is why I strive to constantly improve my knowledge. But hopefully this helped and I'll see you all later. Thank you. Bye.